Well, congratulations on making it this far. You've got a lot of components on the conveyor. You've done a lot of work for it. And now we're going to get into the actual calibrating of the electronics. So these, these, all these things can work together to give you what you want in the end of the day. So after, after we've confirmed that the junction box is connected properly, we've got the right indicator lights on, uh, my next step usually is to go into the calibration menu and look at the load cells and make sure that they're uh, configured correctly. So we are main menu run, that's how, the, that's how the console comes up when you first power it on. There's a little right, there's a little arrow key here, that means we can go to the right, there's more menus there and I'm going to go to the calibration menu. The first one that comes up is tear, but we want load cells. So I have to go to the fourth one and enter here. And the first thing that we can check on for load cells is the number of load cells. We know we have two in our system, and that's what it says. That's what this system is licensed for, is two load cells. And then we can look at the range. Remember, that's the number on the sticker on the side of the load cell, the capacity of it. And it's set for 250 pounds, which is the default value. That's the one we most commonly use. And it's correct, so I don't have to change this. And then we look at the sensitivity. And that's another number that's on the sticker on the load cell. And you can change that. So our default value for load cell 1 is 3 and when we look on the tag that's on the wire for the load cell 1 so this is load cell 1 this this, this connector and this is the cable for it has a tag and it says 3.0029 so that's the number I want to enter here so I just use my right cursor key to go over to the right spot to change that number oops and I go to this one and turn that into a 9 enter and so that's done now we can go to the second load cell and see so it's also defaulted to 3.0 and the actual sensitivity of this one is 3.0025 so I'm going to enter that enter and that's done so the load cells are all set up and the next thing I like to see is how well they're balanced and in order to see that is we go from run and we go to the test menu so we walk all the way over here hit enter to go into test and we're going to look at the load cells it's the second menu in the test display and we see two numbers 16.3 and 20.9 so that is the weight in pounds that the load cells are seeing. These are the load cells that are connected to the weighing rails. And so they're not far apart, which means we have them nicely balanced. If they were really far apart, like one was half of the other, then I would want to do something about it. But in this case, I'm just going to leave that alone. It looks like a good installation so far. Now the next steps will be further calibrations that we have to perform to get this scale system working properly. So one last thing I would like to check before we do any further calibrations is the load cell balance when the conveyor is running. So Andy, if you could plug it in, please. And here the conveyor is running. And you can actually, now that we're doing this, I'll just point out that this little light is now flashing, which is telling us that the speed sensor is working. There's a long delay. This is a very slow turning shaft. In a case like this, some people like to put on two magnets opposite each other on the shaft just so they get two pulses per revolution. It's not absolutely necessary, and we did not do that in this case. So now we want to look at the load cell balance with the conveyor running. That means we want to go to the test menu, which is here. Enter, and we go test load cells, and we're still we're a little bit farther apart, we're about five pounds apart, which is not unreasonable. It changes a little bit, you can see that because the conveyor is moving and no chain is perfectly the same weight all the way along its length. So that's 
That's why you're seeing these different numbers. That's still an acceptable difference, and we're not going to spend any time trying to fine-tune that.